Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Parujay Guhatakutta, senior analyst, and we are going to discuss what has been now being commonly known as a CBI versus CBI case. Parujay, a very interesting intervention petition by the former DIG was handling this case as head of AC3, and he has challenged his transfer. This is application of Manish Kumar Sinha. Now, he's been transferred, as you were aware of, from what he was doing in Delhi to Nagpur. He's also called the CBI as it can become. What is it, the exact words he has to use? CBI equals Center for Bogus Investigation. Investigation. An enforcement director becomes Extortion, extortion director. director. It's amazing. This is from the serving office, IPS officer, who is DIG. That's correct. Okay, so this is not something which the opposition is raising or people like you and me. Okay, let me fill you in a little bit about Manish Kumar Sinha. And this is, mind you, in an affidavit given in the Supreme Court of India. The Supreme Court of India has yet not heard the affidavit on its merits, but the affidavit is in the public domain. He not only is belongs to the elite Indian police service, he's of the rank of uh, Deputy Inspector General, and he's heading the anti-corruption branch of the Central Bureau of Investigation, Nagpur, where he was suddenly transferred in the middle of the night, in the wee hours of the 24th of October, 2018. Now, in the headquarters, he was also heading the anti-corruption branch and he was handling a number of sensitive cases including the Nirav Modi, Mehul Choksi, Punjab National Bank scandal and what is very very interesting is that he has got many medals, police medals, this and that. He was transferred together with Mr. A.K. Bassi who was Deputy Superintendent of Police he and Superintendent. transferred to Andaman. Yes and if you know the, the judge, uh, Chief Justice of India, uh, Mr. Ranjan uh, Gogoe said it's a nice place to stay for a while. <laughs> I'm sure it's a great place for a holiday. A and SS Gurum. But interestingly, he was the man who was directly investigating in the first information report that had been lodged against the now on leave special director of the CBI, Rakesh Asthana. And together with him, there were others, including the deputy superintendent of police of the CBI, Devendra Kumar. Now, it's truly amazing, this affidavit. You know, it runs into 43 pages, but the kind of things in it, Prabir, are mind-boggling. So let me tell you what is possibly the most sensational part of the whole thing. Now, it has been alleged in this particular affidavit that this person called Satish Babu Sana, he is supposed to be running a few companies in Hyderabad. Businessmen in Hyderabad. He has supposed to have 400 employees. He's very happy that he has no debt. Notably, he's the owner of the Playboy Club of Hyderabad. And he has said, or, or according to Mr. Manoj, Manish Senai, I beg your pardon, he said sometime in the first fortnight of June 2018, a few crore rupees was paid to Sri Haribhai Parthibhai Chaudhary. He is Minister of State for Coal and Mines in the Union Government. He happens to be a three-time member of parliament from Banaskatha in Gujarat and reportedly close to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Now, this is about as close as you can get. I, I don't know the merits of the allegations, but this is all part of well, the affidavit. This is also that he was beaten up twice in the uh, CBI during interrogation. And this continuous summons and continuous bleeding is what it seems made him file the complaint because initially it didn't appear that he was going to resist being extorted as it were. So this is also you know, said, said by the DIG. Prabir, according to Mr. Sana, Satish Babu Sana, Minister Haribhai Chaudhary 
had intervened with senior officers of the Central Bureau of Investigation through the office of the Minister of, St of Personnel, Public Grievances and Pensions, which under which the I mean, which directly CBI. controls the CBI, the Central Bureau of Investigation, the director. The and it has been further alleged that the money was paid through one Vipul in Ahmedabad. And according to Mr. Manish Sinha, these facts were disclosed to him by Sana on the 20th of October 2018. Why the date? Because on Four 24th days. October, he's abruptly transferred. The famous midnight transfers happened. So I, I think somewhere is, along the this line. This is only one name, but there are other names also. Let me give you one more name. According to the affidavit of Mr. Manish Kumar Sinha, Dis discreet inquiries were con conducted and one of the sources claimed that in June, in, in the first fortnight of June, there was a talk between K. Lakshma Reddy. He's a member of the Legislative Assembly of Telangana from Medjal. And according uh, uh, that this m money was about one or two crore rupees according to this affidavit. Now, this gentleman, Sri K. Lakshma Reddy, he used to be belonging to the Congress. But he switched sides and he's, he's the ruling party. He's with the Telangana Rashtra Samiti. He happens to be the health minister of Telangana at this particular point of time. He was earlier energy minister. So the story is getting murkier and murkier. There's also a CVC connection here. Correct. And according to Mr. Sana, as per this affidavit, he met the Central Vigilance Commissioner, K.V. Chaudhary together with one of his purportedly a close relative of his, one Gorantla Ramesh, and who's supposed to be the owner of Delhi Public School in Hyderabad. And uh, they were supposedly discussing the Moin Qureshi case. And here... This is with the CVC. CVC. And Mr. Manish uh, Sinha here quickly adds here that there was a question of some land being sold, some money going. And he said that, look, I mean, there's uh, nothing wrong. I mean, he said there's nothing wrong uh, for a CBI officer to meet the Central Vigilance Commissioner. But he's saying, but he's just putting on record these facts. But probably there's much more to it. Yes, we have Mr. Doval's name also I cropping know, up here. Oh, absolutely correct. Mr. Doval's name figures on two separate episodes in this particular affidavit. The first time is when Manoj Prasad, who is one of these informants, who is one of these business persons based in Dubai, when he was interrogated in the CBI headquarters, he bragged. He bragged that you can't touch me. I'll finish you off. I'll kick you out. These are the words. You'll be kicked out. You'll be finished off. Why? Because he was bragging about his close connections with Mr. Samant Goel, who is a special secretary of the research and analysis wing in the cabinet secretary, uh, cabinet secretariat. And it's further alleged that he is very close to the national security advisor, Mr. Eke Doval. Ajit Doval. Now, what is even more amazing, he talks about a personal favor. But then I'm, I'm a little fuzzy. I can't figure out. Do you know what he says? He said there were these elections happening. The two separate things are the personal favor and the other is the election to the uh, delegate to the Interpol. Now, Interpol. interestingly, again, we have some very, very interesting characters coming in. One of them is the joint director of the Central Bureau of Investigation Policy, Mr. Arun Kumar Sharma. He's again allegedly close to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Now, he is also handling very, very sensitive cases, including the Mehul Choksi, the, the Nirav Modi case. Earlier, he had, had handled the Ishraj Jahan alleged encounter case, and that's not all. Now, he, it has, he said that he's apparently diluted that lookout notice against Vijay Malya. All these allegations are in the public domain. Now, what happens is apparently Mr. A.K. Sharma's trip, who was supposed to go abroad, is suddenly cancelled. And, and these elections are supposed to be taking place now, but his trip has been suddenly cancelled. And the plot gets thicker. And it goes on and on and on. This person, Manoj Prasad, 
he alleges that he met, according to Sana, Manad Prasad met Nitin Sandesara of the Sterling Biotech case. Which is where 30,000 crores have been apparently siphoned off. Oh, oh, how much and, money and where? And uh, the, the owners are abroad. Absolutely. Following the footstep of Mr. Malia and Mehul Choksi. And, and Mr. Lalit Modi and Mr. Jatin Mehta, just to mention a few names. A few more. Okay. Now, Manoj Prasad, apparently from the office, from the CBI headquarters, spoke to his brother, Somesh Prasad. And, and these are the same people whose father retired as a joint secretary in the research and analysis wing. And his name, their father-in-law's name, all of them names figure. And, and it's truly amazing. Those names have been coming out for some time. Correct. Including Samant Goel's name, who are again very close to now, the claim Manoj Prasad and Somesh Prasad were close to Samant. And there is one other place where the National Security Advisor Ajit Doval's name crops up second in this time. affidavit for a second time. This is concerning Devinder Kumar, who is a Deputy Superintendent of Police in the Central Bureau of Investigation. Now, it was alleged that he was somehow trying to fix the whole Moin Qureshi case. And he is reportedly was part of the team where Mr. Rakesh Asthana, the special director now on leave, was there. And it has, it has been alleged that he made a false statement and had actually been arrested. Now, remember, this is a, a CBI officer. And when he was being searched, he claimed that some of these mobiles that were in his residence uh, belonged to his children and his relatives. So, whereas there were eight or seven or eight mobiles, only one of them was seized. But most importantly, and this is a very, very damning allegation that Mr. Manish Kumar Sena has made in his affidavit. He said while Devinder Kumar's res pre premises, his residence, was being searched and a phone call was received by the director of the Central Bureau of Investigation. Now that is Mr. Alok Verma. And at that time, he says he was sitting in the office and asked the director, why are you calling off these raids? To which the director, and this is Mr. Alok Verma, replied that his instruction had come from the National Security Advisor, Shri Ajit Doval. Now, this is mind-boggling. Let's, let's be, uh, shall we say, charitable on that. Mm -hmm. There is this report floating in the newspapers. Somesh Prashad, Manoj Prashad were actually working at the behest of uh, NSA, and raw. And they were operatives. They are operatives, therefore they had sensitive information. So if we take that, one could argue that it, this is the reason the NSA was uh, trying to intervene. Though not very clear why the uh, officer in the Boyle Qureshi case should be involved at all. Because they are certainly not raw operatives now, and not operating out of Now when Dubai. Mr. Manish Sinha's lawyer presented is this affidavit in the Supreme Court and said there are some shocking allegations. The Chief Justice of India reportedly said, it's not easy to shock us, you know, we are not easily shocked. But I think as a lay person, as a citizen of this country, as a journalist, these allegations are truly shocking. And I cannot uh, remember such episodes where a senior officer of the CBI is making these kind of allegations and including allegations about other senior officers. Now, we have still not gone to all the other people named. He's also talked about the law secretary. Absolutely. He has talked about the cabinet secretariat. And he's talked about the PO that these three also were at least in the loop somewhere because one of the statements here is that somebody is telling that we have been in touch with the PO it will be sorted out. And that is the night the axe falls on the team investigating what you call the AC3. Now, after this team... Uh, after the, the, the famous sort of uh, sudden midnight transfers in the wee hours of the 24th of October 2018, interestingly, on the 
6th of November 2018, the Satish Babu Sana reportedly or allegedly spoke on WhatsApp to the Union Law Secretary, Mr. Suresh Chandra, who happened to be in London at that point of time in the Nirav Modi matter, in the Nirav Modi case. Now, according to this affidavit, he conveyed a message from the Cabinet Secretary, Pradeep Kumar Sinha. And the Cabinet Secretary is the head of the Cabinet Secretariat and the RAW and, and the Research and Analysis Wing, India's external agency Look, is part of that. the Cabinet Secretary is the key bureaucrat for the government. That's right. He is he, the number he one. He is the senior most bureaucrat in the Absolutely, civil servant. Now, and interestingly, a name of another officer comes in as a so-called go-between. Ms. Rekha Rani of the Indian Administrative Service belonging to the Andhra Pradesh cadre. This is truly amazing, Prabir. You know, it really is, as you said, shocking. But it is also surprising the ineptness of all of this because it does appear that if the government does not have egg on its face and if the Supreme Court does not step in to such serious allegations, we are looking at really the subversion of the entire system of governance in the country. This is an armed wing of the and, government. And, and the entire, yeah, a subversion of a body which is considered to be the premier investigating agency of the country. The CBI, the Central Bureau of Investigation. You know, if, if, is, you remember, if you remember the finance secretary, ex-finance secretary S.P. Shukla had written in News Click that this CBI is not just a department of the government. It's one of the armed wings of the government. Absolutely. So this is and, this is and, and, not and, 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 and not I think, a minor and I think, issue. And I was speaking this morning to a gentleman who we had interviewed on NewsClick, the the former joint director of the CBI. We have to think again what to do. I mean, the CBI is operating under a law called the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act. But we we need to seriously think what kind of legal safeguards do we need a new law does parliament need to add, have a new law to truly ensure the independence the autonomy and the integrity of the cbi we're not talking of just being caged parrots you're talking of far beyond that is being used for petty shakedowns and extortions and serious cases being sort of let go and one thing one can say without any fear of contradiction is this episode is certainly not going to enhance the image of the Narendra Modi government. That, I think, is a statement that does not really require That's a no-brainer, if you like. In fact, I think even the government will concede that <laughs> okay. today. Thank you, Paraja, for being with us. This, as we said, this is a shocking a revelation. If even half of what the DIG, the form, the, he's not a former DIG. No, he's a, DIG, a serving, serving DIG, Deputy Inspector General. Serving De Deputy Inspector General of Police has said, a serving officer never comes out with this kind of allegations. I think this on is, the rec on record. Is never, I don't remember any case where a serving officer made this kind of allegations in an affidavit to the Supreme Including Court. again some of his own colleagues and senior officers in the government of India, top bureaucrats and even politicians including a union minister. Thank you, Paul Joy. We will be closely monitoring what's happening as I guess this rest of the country and I hope the Supreme Court will also monitor it and, uh, the way this needs to be unraveled. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching News Click and we'll be following up these reports.